Yes, thank you for the introduction, uh, Seba, and um, yeah, welcome everyone. So yeah, I will try to keep my session a bit shorter so that we have a break at least after this one. <laughs> so if we're over, no uh, yeah. we'll see how it goes. So um, yeah, just a quick organizational thing before I get started. Um, it was a bit of a hiccup, I think, at the beginning for the attendees to join, and I was wondering if since this was supposed to be an inter interactive workshop uh how how we can do the how attendees can um, join just by chat or can they also yeah themselves? so indeed so uh either by chat uh through zoom um or to youtube live uh in the chat uh there's also if you're uh logged in with zoom uh, there's a little bit more interaction possible so you can also raise your hand and i then can also allow people to uh to talk or to use their webcam okay. so that is a possibility right. as well yeah okay thanks Seba. so we'll, we'll see how that goes when we get started because yeah, so um, I just want to do a quick introduction, um, introduce myself. Um, I'm, well, my life prior to AppSec, uh, I, I studied in Germany and then later on in, uh, in the UK, and I'm still based in the UK here now. Um, then I worked for a couple of years in the private sector um, as a professional service consultant, and then about like 10 years, no, actually by now 12 years ago, I started um, joining uh, HP Fortify, or at that time was Fortify, as probably many of you know, um, uh, a vendor in the application security testing space. Uh, and at that time, um, I also came across Pravir Chandra, um, and he was the original author of uh, OpenSAM, as it was called then. And then I sort of progressed to uh, practice leader in professional services, and now I'm um, for yeah uh, almost yeah more than five years now um, at Checkmarks, which is another one of the major uh, vendors in the application security space. And um, yeah, so I started as a technical account manager, then progressed to to managing a team of technical account managers, and then also was assigned a, a role that we call global head of AppSec advisory. So I'm. Um, Sort of designing the the strategy on uh, for AppSec uh, programs uh, at at Checkmarks now, and so in that context, we we work a lot on application security programs and um, software assurance maturity models and assessments. So, and just going back to the history here, <laughs> to my claim to fame. Um, uh, this is the, the the credits contributors and reviewers page of the of the 1.1 uh, open SAM standard. So I was there here together with Seba and and others, uh, some of whom are still here, and some of them are really was there were there from very early days in application security. So so I joined. Then I was for a few years a bit less active, and more recently I, I got more into um into uh, being more active in this uh, community and also i don't know if you some of you spotted that uh, earlier we are also sponsoring uh, from checkmarks we're also sponsoring um OWASP sam now right so um well i looked at the number of participants and uh, i thought if it's a smaller number we could do like an introductions round but and also i was thinking i uh, was expecting that we would be able to to have a um a verbal discussion, but um, since that's not the case, I will skip that and sort of jump straight to the um, to the question or the the topic of this workshop. Um, so, what I wanted to to talk about today with the group here is the um, the scope of SAM assessments, and the scope can range from one development team to the whole organization. And I think. Uh, Timo in the previous talk also um, talked about that, that there are different levels in the organization where, for, for whom uh, you can do uh, assessments. And actually I, I wanted to ask into the group here, um, although that's a bit more difficult than, than I thought, um, what everybody's experiences are. So I can maybe start from my own experience. Um, I have done, uh, 
sort of both in a way, sort of individual dev teams where for smaller organizations, um, where, where I did just talk to the development team and then they talked to me how they got their management buy-in uh, for doing for doing what they the activities they were doing. Um, so starting basically from the development team and then kind of moving up or sort of uh, horizontal in the organization um, and sort of, ex, ex, kind of exploring the organization from the dev team. But also I've done it the other way around, starting from the management and then asking them what is their, what are their, um, starting with the governance part um, strategy and then diving into um, uh, individual teams in the organization. So, well, that's my first question. Um, what, what are your experiences? And since we're user day, we want to make it interactive like Bart and uh, Seba said, um, what are your experiences in that? How do you approach that to get an assessment of, a, of an organization? And so now um, I think the process would be if you raise your hand, I think Seba can give you the, um, give you the, the. Indeed, so, uh, so if, if you want to use audio, I just raise your hand in a Zoom session and I can activate your audio. You can also uh, use the chat functionality both on Zoom here to share your experience uh, or on YouTube. Uh, we will relay any of the messages that are put in there um, to the to the main session. So um, don't be shy and uh, just come forward either through the chat window or by raising your hand and then I can allow you to talk. So I'm... Um... Obviously, if you're a panelist, you're also allowed to uh, to to uh, to come in. Uh, ben Ben Noor, uh, you should be able to use your audio. Hello, are you Hi. hearing me? Yes. Hi, Seba. Hi, everybody. So uh, let me maybe start uh, um, with sharing my uh, experience. So I am new to this uh, framework, to the Sun framework, uh, but currently I am working uh, uh, for IBM. Uh, as a security architect, uh, in uh, I'm involved in different uh, uh, security projects. So my my um, area of is focus of focus is data security, uh, cryptography, PKI, etc. Uh, so we have some big customers where I think I see uh, maybe the, the, there is a need to to give some advices on how to they can apply. Yeah, your, your framework I think would be a good candidate to maybe uh, advise them to, to start using it and to because they, 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 they are they are so they are acquiring software from from uh, service providers but they are also developing their own software in banking sector um, and they, they started to to, 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 to develop uh, some new uh, applications for for the cloud um, to be uh, yeah, deployed in the cloud. And uh, yeah, so uh, my aim is to, to see, uh, try to understand, get some learning, some understanding of your framework and see if uh, it will be possible that I, 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 uh, there is an opportunity uh, to, to uh, advise them to start using your, your framework. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ben. Um, any okay. any uh, remarks or, um, or aspects on, on the initial point uh, from, uh, from Karsten? So with, it, with regard to scope, uh, um, so in, in general, so the first question here is, if, if we start uh, with the sum assessment, is it typical to... Uh, and then I'm, I'm opening this question also not only for for Ben but for uh, for other people in um, both in the panel but also from the attendees. It, do you typically would start with one or more teams or would you go for a broader organization approach? Uh, Timu, I see that you have a comment, so please feel uh, share to uh, feel free to uh, to share that. Uh, yes. Um... I'm uh, in front of an assessment. Uh, we have very raised the same question, uh, and we came to the to the solution that we will start with a friendly team, 
and afterwards go to a couple of other teams so that we have maybe around six seven teams of 100 teams and let me see if there is a lot of difference between them and in case not we would stop to reduce the effort and in case we see a lot of uh, the differences uh, we would continue with uh, with more teams that is our current uh, how to say low budget approach <laughs> okay that's uh, that's interesting so you're basically saying you're starting with a small number of teams and kind of consider them as representative uh, for the for the whole for the whole development organization i mean that's what i understood you you'd pick yeah. six or seven teams you assess them and you hope you get a good um, yeah a good average kind of representation for the whole organization right is that yes okay yeah that's that's an interesting one yeah um also actually there was something i want to refer to what ben said um there was sort of about architecture in the cloud and and other sort of architecture aspects and that's also from my experience one one way to approach this to uh, identify development teams with a similar um, similarities in terms of the uh, their their types of applications they are uh, developing so if you have for example one team that's developing let's say um, internet facing uh, retail banking applications and you have another team that is developing um, backend um, server based applications and yet another one that developing mobile applications their practices uh, are often more coherent within one part of the development organization. That's also one, one, one way to approach this. So this was something related to, to Ben when he was saying about how can we use this? This might also be a good starting point to, to identify some teams that are similar in, in their way of working. Mm -hmm. I'm also um, going to share a little bit of input from, from various chat uh, sources. So uh, Larissa within Zoom, uh, shares it that's the, that they're just starting and to have a little bit of an ID. Uh, so they're a small organization, about 75 people. And so they start the assessment by asking from all roles, one or two people to fill in an assessment uh, for about two applications, just to, to start small and to have a little bit of an ID where they are. Uh, so that's, mm -hmm. that's one uh, input from, from Larissa in Zoom. Um, and then on YouTube, um, what, I, what I also see is that uh, people typically start with either a, a single development team to, to get, I would say, to a little bit under, for, to understand how it goes. And then we have um, also a PU who convinced his management to say, I'm going to do this as my master thesis on a single de team and then probably goes further than that. Um, but obviously, if you're in big organizations, then that's harder to do. Yeah, no, I think that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's also, yeah. Um, and similar to the one that you just said about from all roles, we also, excuse me, had something similar that um, we had the suggestion that we get a sort of um, uh, a, a selection of different roles, but more sort of in a more intentional way, like the, to, um, take somebody from the, let's say the management and somebody from uh, development management and um, a security champion, for example, to, to do a uh, SAM assessment and then see if they have the same, if they are um, aligned on, on their answers. So sometimes that's also a good way to assess, for example, if the, what the, um, let's say the application security management thinks of themselves is in line with what the development organization feels, mm -hmm. right? So you could, for example, ask about how is the education guidance? And somebody from mm -hmm. the head of AppSec could say, well, we think we have this, we have a certain maturity level. And then you could get the same, ask the same question to a development team and they, well, they may not feel it was so well communicated or they don't, they don't know what, what are the offer, what is offered in terms of education guidance. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's so, so. We also have one uh, one uh, one input from Mark Roberts from uh, YouTube uh, live chat. 
Um, so, so again, they're doing it from an individual dev team assessment point, point of view, but they also have a scalability problem. Right? They have thousands of developers, so they, they can they have plenty of room to try different approaches, but it's a uh, it's big enterprise. Uh, so it's a big challenge to, uh, to do this on an enterprise level. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. And that was one of my questions. So if I move on here to, um, to well, these are about practical experiences and best practices. Um, uh, so what this leads to is the question, should an assessment um, be, uh, be divided basically um, into separate parts? So if we go, um, if I, for example, look at, uh, um, at the, the core structure here. Um, if um, should an, an assessment be divided by by different roles? So should you, for example, ask some people in, on, in the organization only about the governance aspects and other people only about certain uh, about other business functions, or should do you always do a whole assessment with with uh, somebody, uh, a stakeholder that you're interviewing. And that's also, um, yeah, so something that, uh, well, I don't, I mean, we I, actually, from my experience, I don't think there's a, there's a, a definite answer to that. Um, but um, again, I'd like to hear experiences from, so basically the question is, um, is there, um, is it, would it be better to split up the SAM assessment uh, by roles or is it better to do the whole assessment um, with anybody you do? Uh, that's yeah. also a question. There is, uh, I see there's different, uh, there's different input uh, from the chat, uh, from, from the chat here. So, so Martin, hi Martin, uh, is that uh, some questions are totally irrelevant to some groups. So don't just, don't just ask all questions. Uh, so it's always better to, uh, uh, to customize or to groom the questions towards the group that you're you're doing it to, um, and then uh, also Larissa found that uh, that especially for the more uh, specialized uh, roles uh, to divide them in separate parts so that they can answer their part, but that people most of the people that are active in the team don't have answers to all the questions. Also from personal experience, I also see that we typically split it up per role. Uh, and depending on the scope that they can cover, uh, what kind of answers they can provide. One other input, uh, and then I also see that uh, Timo has an opinion on it, so I'll, I'll leave you uh, to talk as well, Timo. Uh, but Frank Wu uh, has put in the Q&A, uh, also a little bit of a variant on that. Uh, so they're building business, uh, like custom built applications. And when they, uh, change functionality or enhancement or, or convert a new architecture? Is it then um, like suggested to redo a full assessment or only focus on the specific aspects that are changed? And so that's, that's a little bit of a different angle. So do you only cover the parts that change or do you do a redo a complete assessment um, of, that, of that team slash application? Yeah, I mean, in my experience, I think um, it's difficult to just redo the, I mean, maybe I'm not sure if I understood the question correctly, because is it the question to redo the things that have changed, that have changed from the perspective of the, was that uh, from? Yeah, and, and I think when, when, I, when, I, I, when I can follow up on that uh, for, for Frank and, and, and in detail, so, um, there's, an, there's a first assessment that you do uh, on, on a team uh, level uh, or on an individual role level, but then uh, development teams change, architectures change, the way of testing change. So when you do follow-up assessments, uh, typically you would focus on the, on the aspects, the security practices or the activities that are changed uh, and only do an assessment on those because you know those will influence the, the maturity level yeah. where that if, if nothing else has changed it doesn't really make sense to to redo the full questionnaire sure oh you so you mean whether whether there's a, a planned a change uh, planned right that's yes indeed yeah. yeah okay that's yeah that's a good point that's so uh, um mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just sometimes uh, as it happens, it has it happened at least in my practice that uh, this, well, we always have the intention to do it in a planned way. So we plan, we have a roadmap plan and we have, I, I put a slide here for those of you who are not that experienced. Um, so we usually, the way it should look like is a roadmap chart like this. So you would do an, an assessment of the current state and then you would plan phases ahead. But as it happens, sometimes it's not, that structured and then um, if you basically come back, let's say a year later to an organization, then sometimes you just have to reassess everything again if you're not following. If you're assessing at the end of any uh, any phase, I think that's very valid point that uh, then you could just reassess the, the, the uh, practices where there was a change planned. But if it happens to be too much disconnected, too disconnected to the previous assessment. I think it's better to do it to start it again. So mm -hmm. that actually, maybe I can take one um, topic a bit earlier here. Um, so this leads us to this roles and SAM practices. Um, so I um, can bring that forward a bit because that's maybe an interesting one to, to talk about. And I wanted to do this, um, oops, sorry. I was planning to do this interactively. So now I need to <laughs> change the, just sort of to put it in the, um, in here as we speak. So here I, I added the, the governance, uh, the business functions and the SAM practices. And since we're talking about dividing an assessment into different roles and, um, but then that leads to the question, which, which role is um, responsible for which kind of, um, SAM practice. And maybe to make this a bit easier, I put some roles here as a suggestion. So I should maybe use this slide. Um, so top level management, we have um, like the board of directors, senior management, um, CISO. We would have somebody like the head of application, uh, head, oops, head of AppSec. Um, we would have the development organization, we have, have DevOps. We might have an ops, I mean, operations, um, and we may have HR executives. That's some some roles that more or less sort of off the top of my head from my practice that I put in here. Um, and the interesting, what I think is interesting also that this is changing with the, the industry changing. So we may have some things that we traditionally see in some way and they may be changing um, with, with uh, in, in the current times of DevOps and infrastructure as code. And, and so the, um, the way development is changing may also have an impact on the roles here. So um, I'm just curious to, to hear from maybe some of the panelists or from, I can't see, by the way, I can't see the chat really. So I'm sorry, <laughs> Seba, if I'm relying on you to- Yeah, no that problem. I will, I will definitely relay uh, any, any uh, any chat uh, input, um, and and indeed, if for instance uh, you want to uh, you want to even ask or put in your your comments by uh, by audio, raise your hand. I can uh, I can activate your um, um, your uh, your audio. Um, so let's so, start with the first one here. So strategy and metrics. Um, I, let's do it one by one. What's the um, what? What are the opinions here on what should be the role uh, responsible for this practice? And again, I, I see some uh, some input from people. I see uh, CISO from Timo. I I would say uh, also yeah. I also see that CISO. I think overall strategy metrics is probably the the more appropriate role, or I would say the more general role. That uh, that can can make sure that this is being done in terms of responsibility would be a CISO. Um, oh, but also yeah, have so maybe throw a curveball here into the room. So the the policy and compliance. I mean, we're talking about. Well, it depends also what policy we're talking about about the information security policy or a spe more specific AppSec policy. And when you think about an AppSec policy, um, then maybe it's. The, the head of AppSec who um, who would also take a responsible role here. Um, so, but that's that's already, I mean, you could, 
of course, you could also draw like a, a racy matrix here, like responsible, accountable, informed, and um, yeah, and so on. But um, I would, if I head of AppSec is also a part of this. Yeah, if I may uh, weigh in uh, for most of these um, practices, I would indeed foresee a, um, a racy matrix more than a single uh, responsible. Mm -hmm. Especially, um, you have the responsible CISO and the head of AppSec, but if your company is big enough to have a legal counsel, um, uh -huh. yeah. they would also be in there. And I don't see this in your role uh, description. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like I said, it was more like off the top of my head. I didn't that just <laughs> didn't have a um, didn't expect this to be a complete list of roles. Um, but good mm -hmm. point, indeed. Yeah, uh, I I like the. Uh, that's actually indeed also from our practice, practical experience, the case that uh, legal is also yeah. important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kerstin, can I link back uh, to the to the assessments that you want to do? Uh, because I, I think this is also linked to the people that you want to ask the questions to, eh, right? Um, and, and so I, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, what we typically do is we don't ask the question to a single person, but to multiple persons. And the reason is exactly, so f for strategy and metrics, for instance, if you would ask the CISO what the strategy is, he will give you some document. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the question is, how, how well is that strategy known throughout the organization? Yeah. So I think yeah. it's important to definitely ask questions to multiple persons mm -hmm. and indeed, there should be one person authoritative, um, but mm -hmm. it's it's always very useful in, in, in my opinion to ask the questions to multiple persons to actually see to what extent is it actually lived or is it is it used within the organization and, and yeah. that way you can actually challenge a bit the, the, the answers of the authoritative person that, that you get. Eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I, I said something sort of similar earlier that uh, right. Um, indeed, so you you have also one perception is from the management that uh, like AppSec management or um, from the senior man senior management um, that they think that they they have a let's say a good education and guidance a good education program mm -hmm. in place, but it's actually not well understood in the development organization. So um, there may be more. Uh, effort needed to to roll it out and make it known and raise the awareness uh, yeah. for for such an education program. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. So um, let's uh, maybe carry on a bit. So we are here. We're still sort of, but I st still get like to get some opinions on the the other. Maybe we should do it more by business function to keep it a bit more short. So design. Um, maybe let's jump into this one. So. Um, uh, any any views on this? I see uh, architects mentioned in the in the chat, so yeah. Um, yeah. I would second that, Ben. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so exactly. So, but then we get sort of to the point if it's a chief architect, but that can also be all architects in smaller uh, in in different parts of the development organization. Yeah. Um, and I also see uh, from Rio Taro um, product managers, um, or even uh, also from Timo DevOps. Yeah. And from my side, I would weigh in with the security champions. Mm. Okay. Wait, product managers, uh, DevOps, um, security champions, yeah. It really depends on uh, on what kind of scope, detail, level that you uh, that you do this. Uh, but these are, I think, uh, security analysts is also uh, one that is being mentioned by Ben. Oh, security analysts, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, also um, uh, QA could also be. I mean, especially. Oh, well, it depends if we're just talking about the threat assessment, but also in the security requirements. Because it goes, uh, it also relates to testing, uh, having requirements that can be tested. So here I also see um, yeah. QA as um, managed. Well, depends what the what the role is called, um, head of QA or something, or like QA mm -hmm. manager. 
a role that seems missing, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, product management, if the organization is big enough again? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, like I said, I, I just sort of, <laughs> um, the thing was here more to, to have start, to start with something. Yeah, okay. Not, not, there was no, uh, so. no, uh, um, intention. Did Reinhardt to, also mention his product owner? For security uh, requirements, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so security architecture. I think we have some. Well, I can, can maybe. It's quite clear. Start with some similar ones. Architect um, sort of goes without saying. Uh, but I guess product managers could also. Well, I don't know. Maybe we, it's more or less the complete list. Of, uh, some similar list again. Uh, I'm from Reza, technical lead. Um, that might be it's also quite a broad definition or role. Um, and maybe Reza, if you want to be more specific, technical lead is, is a very broad definition of a, of a role. Yeah. So I try, try to create a bit more space to. Yeah, but that's interesting. What. Um... Yeah. So indeed, uh, and as Maxim says, in, um, so if in your chat you're adding your, I would say, suggested roles, then maybe just even like have the practice, name the practice and the role you think it would be relevant for so that indeed we can uh, uh, oh, yeah. go mm -hmm. look at, uh, at what would be relevant for which practice. I think secure builds, uh, secure deployment, uh, Timo already from the beginning uh, already mentioned DevOps. Uh, quite uh, quite early right? yeah I think that's quite clear exactly yeah. DB3 uh, also puts for secure build security engineer okay. mm -hmm. um, yeah Defect management, um, I would also bring in well, QA here again, including uh, in addition to maybe DevOps, or maybe more QA. Um, is there, what's your view on that? Do you agree or is that? QA is definitely uh, relevant. Hmm. So risk management could also be uh, relevant there. Yeah, yeah. chief risk uh, manager or risk management, yeah. Testers, uh, also from Larissa, uh, even support. Uh, and earlier on, uh, Divish also mentioned a technical program manager. Um, but that's mm -hmm. also quite a broad definition. Yeah, I mean, I wonder where, for which, also for yeah. which. Yeah. Yes, that would be. Um, we have a question or a remark from Rio uh, towards, Taro uh, towards Timo. Um, DevOps is a language of an organizational structure or culture. It, it's rather confusing to write it up as a role or do you want mm. to say as a whole? Um, so that's yeah. maybe Timo, you can. Uh, you can... Is, is there something, a specific role in the DevOps team that would be more uh, that you could? Uh, be more precise in? Uh, I actually see at some customers a team called Deployment Pipeline. That's how they call the team. But it's on a team level. So and it's more the responsibility of a team then, or what? Okay. We see uh, from Ted Reinhardt, a build manager. Is that a specific role? Deployment, uh, ah, all right, okay, yeah, 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 but I think that's, yeah, I think that would also fit in here, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, maybe we can sort of move on a bit to the verification, um, just in the interest of time as well. Yeah. So here, um, I think, well, security testing is, um, well, the 
while the AppSec, uh, while security champions is something I would bring in here. Um, yeah, especially. So for the architecture assessment, I would yeah. suggest have the uh, security champions there. Um, Larissa like in Zoom still has an addition to uh, policy and compliance and mentions product managers. It's same. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's also an interesting, good point. And at a product level, there may be different uh, compliance requirements and um, and because of that, the product manager can, can uh, should have a responsibility there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, security, well, here we could also have something like um, auditors, if there's like a formal role. I mean, security champions in our, my understanding is more like somebody of the development team who has a special um, skill and experience in application security and then takes it more like an embedded role. Um, but of course there are different sort of different levels of or different understandings of security champions, but then there could be like a formally appointed auditor who, who does an, an, an architecture assessment. And I, um, yeah, so here I think the, the AppSec manager um, is somehow in, we're definitely involved in the, um, but also I think actually also in my opinion, DevOps roles also play a ro large role in this, in um, the, uh, the integration of, of security testing. Um, and this is also probably like a deployment pipeline team or deployment manager. And so I, I sort of, and then, and, and then testers, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, testers slash QA, that will be... Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, from, uh, from Vinod, there's a, there, there's a question. Um, in security requirements, you have mentioned QA manager. Does this include security team in it? Because still most organizations have separate teams for security and QA. Uh, so in that case, mm. do we... Uh, do we need to have a security analysts um, in yeah. terms of uh, so oh. that there's I, in terms of uh, that in, and that's and that's something to realize here as of, of uh, that that overall we have I, we have very broad definitions of roles and they mm. can be implemented or filled in differently in different organizations. Mm. Um, yeah, but, absolutely. I think it was more like the idea to discuss this was more to get a feel for. What could be the considerations here? Uh, what are typical roles? I mean, also there are different schools on how you organize your QA organization. Some we have, like we heard that uh, in some organizations, the security is just sort of considered part of uh, QA. Um, mm -hmm. Other have yeah. that separate Indeed. role. So um, it depends on also on on the yeah, on the uh, approach on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, well, let's quickly maybe have a have a quick go at operations here, um, and then maybe we need to draw it to a conclusion. I think uh, because mm -hmm. what was the plan was to finish. Uh, yeah, at ten to right, ten to the hour. Um, but here the interesting bit is I think that we go into again uh, in DevOps and like cloud native um, infrastructures and uh, infrastructure as code, we get into a different situation than what we were traditionally. Here we would have like um, the operations department, maybe like with somebody like an um, uh, security operations um, SOC manager um, or um, SIM management. Uh, yeah. And this is more the, the technology behind it, but um, but now um, and but the same uh, here environment management here for um, for, for incident management. Larry also uh, mentions uh, support uh, in in oh, yeah. maybe also somewhat broader than than a role, but support is definitely going to be involved in incident management. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, that's. Uh, yeah, and here we would also have operations managers, but now um, with sort of infrastructure being driven from the development organization, uh, this is the question how this then, how DevOps, like uh, again, environment pipeline, uh, deployment pipeline team 
um, takes part of the in, in responsibility of um, ensuring a, a secure uh, environment and both the operations and environment management, sort of like um, making sure the uh, software supply pipeline uh, is is um, verified and sort of patches and updates, they also become part of the um, deployment pipeline. So, I mean, making sure that all your dependencies are um, free from known vulnerabilities and so on, that if it reaches directly into the operation, um, that also becomes part of the responsibility of the um, deployment pipeline manager or, or deployment manager. So I, I, I guess we could put this against both here. So this is something I think where times are also changing and where I don't, at least I don't see a clear separation here yet how this um, will develop over time. But that was one, one point here I thought was interesting to discuss. Okay, so yeah. Um, so I think the conclusion is there, <laughs> there are different, um, different schools and different views on that, but it's interesting to put some names against these so it gives some ideas of who to talk to for different parts of a SAM assessment. Mm -hmm. um, so even if it's not, I mean, I realize it's not a very specific guidance, but I think it can can help a bit to um, to for direction and maybe like we, we discussed in between, it's also depending on the organization and also which part of the organization you're assessing. If you're just assessing one division of an organization, um, it's maybe that manager of that division and not the uh, the CISO, but rather like the uh, the information security officer of that part of an organization and so on. But um, yeah, I hope this helps getting a bit of um, some, some discussion around how this can be divided up. I think this is definitely a topic that um, that that deserves, I would say, a separate thread on the, on the Slack channel. Um, so what I what I propose is that that after the talk here, um, that you maybe uh, take a, a screenshot or or share a link uh, to the filled in uh, slide and and share it on the on the Slack channel. Um, then sure. we'll probably have some more input. Um, as Maxim also mentioned earlier on the on YouTube live chat, is I, I think there there has already been questions around okay what kind of roles are involved and we should probably build a list of roles involved and touch points from between roles and uh, and the some activity. So it totally yeah. makes sense to um, to to put more I to follow up on this. Yeah, yeah. And, it might need to be more generic than this one, even because we have another question on uh, how do you approach an organization that doesn't have all the listed roles or oh, the yeah. roles don't have the necessary training. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, and it's not easy because it's also sometimes the same things have different names in different organizations. So there's no, no really agreed standard. So well, we have some like um, some organizations like uh, ISC squared or ISACA, which have some rules around this, but it's still different, or even in different regions. I mean, in North America, things are sometimes called differently than they are here in Europe and so on. Um, so yeah, um, well, thank you very much for the um, discussion here. And um, I think that's where I will leave it to have a bit of a break before the next uh, call. So I thank you and I hand it back to Zeba and Bart. <laughs>